Why do some of us succumb to disease while others remain immune? Where do we get our skin color? What makes one person gay, another straight? The answers aren't as simple as we once thought. In 2001, a pair of twins was born who appeared to be a boy and a girl. On closer inspection, it turned out that one had signs of both male and female genitalia. The twin was a hermaphrodite. Scientists believe this happened because a single egg was fertilized by two sperm, one with a female sex chromosome and one with a male sex chromosome. The egg developed into a blastocyst with both male and female cells. Then the egg divided, and each of the two new cells shed an extra chromosome, resulting in a blastocyst composed of both male and female cells. When the blastocyst split to create twins, one had more cells with the male sex chromosome and developed into a boy. The other had cells with similar numbers of male and female sex chromosomes, resulting in a child with male and female genitalia. The twins are halfway between identical and fraternal, the only known case of semi-identicals in the world. Identicals, fraternals, and semi-identicals. The simple classifications we're used to may be falling apart, but scientists continue to close in on the genetic riddle of why identical twins occur. At five weeks, the identical twin embryos are starting to take shape. Curved into a C, their heads and tails can be distinguished, along with their hearts, spinal columns, and tiny limb buds. At this stage, the embryos look almost indistinguishable from any vertebrate in the animal kingdom. Yet even at just one and a half millimeters long, these fragile creatures are about to embark on a critical period of brain development. This five week milestone could be another stage where identical twins develop key differences before they're even born.